If you look up induction heaters, you will find a few different sorts. There's the sort some people have in their kitchens, but I'm talking about the sort that you can make yourself using magnets. They both do the same thing. They heat up metal very quickly using magnetism. Apparently, the magnetism pulls at the electrons in the bottom of the saucepan, whatever, and then when the magnetic field is flipped over, then it pushes the electrons away again. So the electrons are jiggled up and down within the rigid structure of the metal. And in the wonderful world of physics, that jiggling means heat. The more things jiggle, the hotter they get. The key is the speed at which these electrons are jiggled about. The magnetic field has to be powerful and it has to be reversed rapidly. Induction hobs use clever electronics to flip the magnetic field at high speeds. But people like you and me can use a much simpler method. Stick some magnets around the edge of a disc and rotate the disc. If every second magnet is turned upside down, then, of course, at any given point above the magnets, the magnetic field will flip up and down. Won't it? Yes. Again, the critical things are the strength of the magnets and the frequency of the flip. In this case, that means the speed at which the magnets pass under the metal. So much for the theory. Does it actually work? That was my mission. Can I make an induction heater that actually works usefully? For that, I needed some magnets. So I wrote to firstformagnets.com and they kindly agreed to give me a reduction on the price of 40 strong magnets for this experiment. Thanks very much, guys. Check out their website, firstformagnets.com. They have lots of different kinds and shapes and strengths of magnets, because that's what they do. They're in the UK, but they sent them to me here in Ireland. So presumably they can send them to you, wherever you are. Link in the description. Now, this is all part of an idea to heat a house using wind power directly. So a windmill would rotate this disc with the magnets on it. But I'm still ill and I haven't built a windmill yet. And anyway, I need to check that it works first. So I took a car wheel hub off my old bandsaw to use as the new disc hub. I have a new bandsaw now. Well, actually it's a very old one. So this one is just in the way and I'm recycling it bit by bit for useful parts. The idea is to put a wooden disc on it and drive it round and round with my pillar drill because I don't have the windmill yet using a V-belt. But for that, I need a pulley in the chuck. I don't have a suitable arbor but I found out that I do have a drill bit that fits snugly into a couple of the pulleys. And I just knocked wooden wedges in to hold the pulley onto the drill bit. And that seemed to work brilliantly. Using the pillar drill means I can change the speed easily enough, which will be interesting. So far, so good. Now, of course, you could cut the disc out easily with a jigsaw and drill holes in the ordinary way. But seeing as I had already drawn it all out carefully on the computer, I just asked my CNC router to do it all for me. Which it did. 
This is 18mm MDF. And I've made 40 holes for 40 magnets, which makes this one of the biggest rotary magnetic induction heaters that I've seen on YouTube, and I'm quite excited to see what it will do. Mind you, I'm not expecting it to heat a house. That's, <laughs> I think that's asking a bit much of it. This is big, but I don't think it's going to be big enough yet. But it will help me work out what I would need for the final version and the magnets that go into this one could always be moved into a larger disc. Because the thing is, the larger the disc, the more magnets you need, obviously, to go around the outside. But the faster the outside will spin for each rotation. And that means you get more pole flips, magnetic flips, um, every time you go round. So without having to increase the RPM, you get more jiggling going on. Now, there is a downside to that too, magnetic resistance, but I need to do some more experimenting to work out all that stuff properly. In the meantime, I'm aiming for relatively low RPM because of the windmill, but with as many magnets as I can afford. Now, foolishly, I've drawn the holes for the hub in the wrong places. <laughs> I'm going to blame that on my ongoing flu. It's a wonder I'm getting anything done at all. Seriously, it's been nearly two months now and I'm still ill and progress is intermittent and slow. Very, very slow. But anyway, I am still here, oh, just about. And I printed out the correct positions for the holes and I used my torch to help me locate the paper on it properly, which worked, but not perfectly as you'll see. Now all I need is some magnets. Days went by and no magnets arrived. Oh, they got stuck somewhere. But then, woohoo! Now these are 30 millimeter round neodymium magnets, each one five millimeters thick, and they are powerful. They even come with a warning on the box. These magnets could crush your fingers if not handled carefully. So of course I handled them carefully. And I should have made the holes another millimeter deeper, but these ones did work fine. It took a while to get the hang of putting the magnets in. They want to do their own thing and they do that thing very fast. They aren't labelled north or south or anything, but as long as every second one matches, then you're doing it right. It was all a bit of a wrestling match and a child's fingers really could get hurt. So do be careful. And the ones in between need to go the other way up, but they'll tell you very clearly if you've got that right. Anyway, we are now ready to see what it can do. And all you need now is to hold some metal over the spinning magnets. I guess you could use iron or steel, but you don't want to do that because obviously then they will be sucked down onto the magnets. The interesting thing is non-magnetic metals work too. So aluminium and copper and brass. They don't get attracted to the magnets, but the electrons inside them do. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> They're amazing. Physics is amazing. This is a bit of copper pipe with some water in it, so I can measure the temperature more easily. 
Now, Kieron came along at just the right time, so I could hold the camera <laughs> and he could hold the hot pipe. What a plan. <laughs> Can you get it lower? And more over the magnets, that's it. Yeah, you can. And look, it's working. The metal gets hot and that heats the water. 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. You stop whenever you're ready, before your fingers melt. But you could go a bit closer and, uh, yeah, that's it. 43. It's impressive, isn't it? 44, 45. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> the pressure, the pressure. 47. See, it's working. How exciting. 48. We we'll stop at 50, okay? 49, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 50. <laughs> yeah. Works, doesn't it? <laughs> now, normally these discs rotate at 10,000 RPM or faster, but this one is spinning at just 500 RPM. But because it has all those magnets, that comes to 20,000 magnetic flips a minute. Those electrons sure are a jiggling. And remember, of course, that the pillar drill is just here for the trials. The ultimate plan is a windmill. I know I keep saying that, but somebody's going to tell me off for using electricity to make heat. And Oh, man. <laughs> anyway, OK, now imagine this, if you will. Imagine the windmill is able to spin a bigger disc because it's a big windmill, okay? And that bigger disc will have more magnets on it, maybe 100 or 120. So even if the RPM remained the same at say 500 RPM, then there would be more flips per minute, wouldn't there? Because there are more magnets going around in the same time. And what would that mean? Well, I'd say it should mean more jiggling. Let's try it the easy way just by changing the gears on yeah, the pillar yeah. drill. Change it up to 1000 yeah. RPM, which brings the flips per minute up to 40,000. Woohoo! Now, ah, let's see what that does. Mind your eyes, just in case. Woohoo! Okay. Here comes a very brave Kieran. This time we found some clothes pegs for Kieran's fingers. 32. What do you think? Clothes pegs. Whoops. 43, 45, 47, 48, 50. That's quite exciting. 54, 56, 57. Can we boil this? How are your fingers? How are your nails? Oh, good. At the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Can you get it lower or is it too much drag? Ah, uh, it's a bit too much drag. Yeah. And I have just a whole little bit of place. Ninety-five, ninety-seven, ninety-eight, ninety-nine. Woohoo! <laughs> Brilliant! Splash. We boiled water in about. I'm sorry. In all the excitement, I managed to turn the camera off at that point. But what we agreed was that the pipe and the water inside it heated to a hundred degrees in about a minute and a half or approximately one degree per minute. Just imagine what this could do, powered by a windmill, quietly rumbling along day and night. Watch this space. 